Hi family and welcome to Sweet Truth. Do you dare listen? Today is the very, very, very last episode of Obadiah with Campton and guys. <laughs> At all times, all good things, you know, come to an end. Well, not necessarily, I don't like the thing that way, but... Um, like I said before in the beginning that Obadiah is a very, very short book, you know, in the Bible. It only has like one, like just chapter one, and then, uh, verses in, within, 21 verses within that chapter one. So it's like, oh, you know, wow. So basically the shortest book, if not the shortest book <laughs> in the Bible, man. And so today... I will be reading from verse 17 to 21, uh, which brings me to an end of this season, season 5, and um, it has been refreshing, you know, just uh, having to see, or rather learn the background of... um, the two brothers, Jacob and Esau, you know, and just seeing how that came about and how that was um, about, you know, like, I've always been curious about Obadiah and it takes studying it for you to uh, fully get or like try to comprehend what was going on at that time and, um, what God was talking about, you know, at that particular time, and so I've had fun, um, studying Obadiah, and like, just trying to learn, and learn, and learn, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all, all about learning, and growth, and knowing God more, and understanding God more, and like, just seeing, you know, how God worked in different situations and just different times and all that. And so it's fun. Like, I love reading the Word of God because I love getting to know my God. And overall, it's just like a blessing. Amen. And so today, I'll do it a little bit different. I'm going to read from my New Life Bible version first. And then I will translate or rather transition to the Amplified Version, then explain it verse by verse as I go. Amen. But before we get into that, let us pray. So, Father God, I just want to thank you for today, Father God. Thank you for bringing us safely, O oh Lord, throughout the whole week. You've washed over us, Father God. You've protected us and you've blessed us. And, Father God, I just pray and commit ourselves to you, Father God, today and in the coming weekend, Father God, that you will continue blessing us and watching over us father god thank you for obadiah father god thank you for your wisdom and perspective oh lord on the book father god and everything that you've taught us father god and yes i'm grateful to have learned a different side of you god and so i am just so so thankful for the book father god and i'm thankful for you bringing us all the way to the end O oh Lord of the chapter, Father God, and so thank you for your grace, Father, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your goodness. Bless us in this day, Holy Spirit, go before us, speak through me, and intercede before me, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And so without wasting any time, let us read, and that is Obadiah 1, 17 to 21, beginning with 17. But on Mount Zion, thou will be a way to be set free, and it will be holy. The people of Jacob will own what belongs to them. Amen. And now going to the Amplified Version, which reads, But on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, because Mount Zion is Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance for those who escape, and it will be holy. No pagan will defile it, and the house of Jacob shall possess their former possessions. And then so stopping right there. 
basically by now we know that mount zion you know means israel so in this verse mount zion is israel and what this verse is trying to say is that at the end of the day israel would take back her promised land you know because that was her land you know with the uh Esau and the and edom the edomites you know uh stole the land from the israelites you know and so um if you've listened to the other previous uh you know segments and all that you know that like edom the edomites were thieves and they stole a lot of things from israel you know in jerusalem and they stole not only their positions but their lands as well and so like um edom or rather sorry obadiah was prophesying like hey israel is gonna get back her lands at the end of the day those are her possessions you know <clears throat> and so and so in that way as god's children we can rest assured just knowing that hey like at the end of the day god will give you what belongs to you you know that everything that the enemy has ever stolen from you will come back to you and that's what this verse tells me you know that at the end of the day god's children will have and get what belongs to them because israel will have they did have actually they did get what belonged to them you know everything that the edomites had stolen from them they got back so you can rest assured you can have your faith and put your trust in the one that will give you everything the enemy thought he had taken from you and anything he had tried to take from you or steal from you god is like i'm gonna give it back to you i'm gonna give it back to you so just like trust me and don't worry about a thing because i'm gonna give you back your possessions i'm gonna give you back your land i'm gonna give you back what belongs to you at the end of the day god has the final saying so he gives and he will bless you sometimes in our own you know circumstances it feels like or seems like hey like the enemy has stolen this from you or taken this from me and taking this from me and it looks like i'm you know i won't have this i'm not having this i'll never have this and god is like no like wait a minute like i always vindicate my children like i always give back you know what belongs to my children and so you can rest assured that god will bring back to you give you back what belongs to you amen and amen so moving on verse 18 the people of jacob will be a fire the people of joseph will be burning but the people of Esau will be like dry grass they will set them on fire and destroy them none of the people of Esau will be left alive for the lord has spoken and the amplified version reads then the house of jacob shall be a fire and the house of joseph a flame in executing god's wrath but the house of Esau will be like stable they which meaning joseph jacob sorry they, so they jacob shall set them on fire and consume them the edomites so that there will be no survivor of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. So just to give you a little background, at one time, Israel was split into two separate nations. After Solomon's rule, ten tribes followed Jeroboam. Oh, Jeroboam my bad I had to read that again I'm like wait a minute <laughs> like that doesn't sound right so Jeroboam or Jeroboam if you will was a king and 
so he took the ten tribes of Israel with him and they became known as the Northern Kingdom, which is also known as Ephraim. And the other two tribes became the Southern Kingdom, also known as Judea or Judah. And so what verse 18 speaks on is the houses of redemption being or rather becoming a unification and so um Ephraim and Judah both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom you know are going to come together come in unity and will be unified and you know will have their redemption because they split up after Solomon's rule um and I don't even know why they did that like uh because all together like the 12 tribes of Israel you know I thought, like, rather they were supposed to be together, like, all the same, but I'm just learning now, you know, in Obadiah, that they did split up, split up but that they were going to come together, and the total destruction of Edom, you know, was going to take place. And also, if you didn't know, like, I, I said this earlier as well, too, like, Jacob and Esau were brothers. And so, just to give you a little background on that, Jacob's children became Israel, and Esau's children became Edom. And so, also that kind of falls in into the whole separation thing as well, too, because you know Israel became you know Jacob's uh, descendants and all that, and then Esau's descendants became Edom, you know, as the Edomites. But they did wrong, you know, like they did wrong against uh Israel and Jacob and all that and God always vindicates Israel. God always vindicates Israel. So you always wanna be on Israel's side. You always wanna be on the right side of history and the right side of history is being on Israel's side. Always support Israel. Pray for Israel and be pro Israel. Because God always vindicates Israel from generation to generation to generation to generation amen and so it is a blessing and even the word of god says that i will bless those who bless israel and kiss those who kiss israel so always be pro israel vindicate israel pray for israel bless israel amen and amen so moving on Verse 19. Reads. So um, the people of the Negev, which means south or dry, will live on Mount Esau, and those in the lower land will live in the land of the Philistines. They will live in the land of Ephraim and Samaria, and Benjamin will own Gilead. And the amplified version reads that then those of the Negev shall possess the mountain of Israel, and those of the Shipla shall possess the Philistine plain. Also, they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin will possess Gilead, which is across the Jordan River. So In this verse, Mount Esau is Edom. So this is talking about like, you know, Mount uh, Edom, the country, the land. And so God was basically trying to say like, hey, he wasn't only going to punish Edom, but the Philistines and the other enemies of Israel as well. And so, this is just to let you know, like, like, yo, when God destroys your enemies, he destroys all of them, not just some. So, God knows how to vindicate you. He knows how to revenge for you. So many unfair things happen to you, you know, just about everyone and anyone, anywhere, and... 
uh, the majority feel like, hey, they should, like, get revenge for themselves and stuff like that. And, you know, just try to do things their own way or their own way. And God is like, no, like wait a minute you know like throughout and throughout in history and even in the word of god you know it is known that god always avenges you know like his children like i said before in the beginning you know of the segment that hey god will always vindicate you you know he's always gonna give you twice and get back what belongs to you he's always gonna give you what belongs to you and that means fighting your battles as well and like just at the end of the day, like, just giving you, you know, uh, your victory. And so, you don't have to get any kind of, like, revenge or anything against those that wrong you or anything. you all like, just trust God. Like, your job is to just, like, trust God and continue, like, believing in God. And He will fight your battles for you. He will do your revenge for you. And He will vindicate you and when God when God is the one revenging for you he's not only like just gonna get some or like just stick on some or like just a few like he's gonna get all of them you know like everybody everybody you know gotta go everybody gotta go so the what verse 19 is trying to say like hey it was going to be like the Philistines, you know, all the enemies of Israel, you know, that uh, over the years just like oppressed Israel and like just they stole from them and they they did all sorts of things. And like I said, like God always vindicates Israel, you know, and so these people had what was coming to them then. And this is even for like, you know, future generations to come basically like. Anyone who runs Israel, like, God is going to vindicate Israel and is always going to come for them. So you don't want to be, you know, the one that runs Israel. Amen. And verse 20 and 21 reads, The people of Israel who are living among the Canaanites as far as Zeropath, and the people of Jerusalem who are in Shepai will own the cities of the the cities of Nagiv. And the men of Jerusalem who fight and win the battle will go up to Mount Zion to rule over Mount Esau. And the nation will belong to the Lord. Amen and amen and amen. And that is the whole chapter but to end this before i end this let me go ahead and read the amplified versions amplified version which reads and the exiles of those hosts of the sons descendants of israel who am, are among the canines as far as zero path and the exiles of jerusalem who are in shepherd shepherd shall possess the cities of the Nagva Onishva, the deliverers shall go up on Mount Zion to rule and judge the mountain of Israel and the kingdom, and the kingship shall be the Lord's. Amen. And so, at the end of the day, verse 20, like Israel gets all the cities, you know, like all the cities, you know, the one, all the ones that belong to that belong to uh, the Edomites, that belong to the Philistines and everything, you know, like all the enemies of Israel, like Israel gets all that. And that is just the vindication of the Lord, you know, and like justice being saved for Israel. And basically, like, I was reading a reference that said, like, this wasn't only like for back then, but then, like, just basically saying that it's for even in future generations, you know, like till the end of time. Till the end of time, Israel will continue getting what belongs to her. And all the lands that belong to her will all go back to her, her promised land. Because all these lands, the Philistines and the 
Edomites, like every land that they had tried to steal, or did steal, like basically Israel is going to get it back. And verse 21, Mount Zion is a metaphor for the city of Jerusalem. And basically just saying like in the end times, Israel will be restored to her promised land. Like everything, every land that belongs to Israel will be restored to her promised land. Amen. And so there it is, y'all. Like the whole chapter, the whole chapter one, and it is only chapter one of the book of Obadiah. Amen. And so, like, y'all, I hope y'all have been blessed by this very short season. I know it was a short season, but nonetheless, it's been a bit, it's been a blessing. And, and like, I, I hope you've learned as much as I have learned from this season. I mean, and so, with that being said, if you are willing to turn away from your old ways, your own old sinful ways and you know you're just tired of living that way living that kind of life and you're just like you know what sweet truth like i want to start living you know a life that i know i should believe in you know called to god and like i just want to trust god like i want to trust god with my future i want to trust god with everything that i am and i want god to fight my enemies to fight my battles and what do I do? And well, the word says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Amen. And so just repeat after me. Dear God, I know I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. And I believe that he died for my sins. And that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen and the angels rejoice and God says welcome my son my daughter and you'll just get ready to experience the blessings and missing goodness and the will of God amen and so you'll be blessed be encouraged and be fearless have a blessed day